Welcome everyone to this Kerbal Space Program Let's Play. It's sandbox mode where Jeb and I just have fun with rockets. Now Jeb was a bit disappointed that in the previous episode we didn't manage to get a manned spaceship into space with separatrons. But undeterred he found another way of at least getting science from high over Kerbin. So let's go straight to the launch pad to see the monstrosity that Jeb has managed to put together. And there she is, a beauty, isn't she? All that time, three days, spent building this. Marvellous. 880 parts, 18 stages, 81,320 funds, and all to get a tiny science package into space. Now, Jib's convinced it can be done. Me, not so convinced. So I've installed Mech Jeb, we'll engage the autopilot, and we'll send her up. Three, two, one, launch. And away she goes. Separatron Madness clears the tower. Now this is probably going to be very, very painful. So I will leave Met Jeb to do its job and talk to you soon.
we're coming up on our gravity turn now. And we begin the turn just as we lose that major stage. Perfect timing. Speed is rapidly increasing now, as is our apoapsis. And look at that, beautiful. Now we're still in the atmosphere, as you can see, so the apoapsis will be dropping. But we still have stages to go, so let's prepare to complete the final exercise, which is to circularize. So we'll disengage the autopilot, we will create the node. So we know exactly where we need to point this beauty. And we will execute this last step manually just for the honour of doing it. Now we've got uh, 1276, which is plenty of delta V. So everything is looking good. We've now got 1 minute 50 before we arrive at the node. And I think Jeb was right. We are going into orbit. Let's just hope it was all worth it. Beautiful, soothing music. At least we made it into space, which is a good start. 120. What's left of our craft disappearing into the distance. Now I don't think we'll be making it to the Mun, but in 53 seconds we'll be making it into a stable orbit. Forty seconds. And thirty. I hope you're taking bets, because you're going to need the money. Put your money where your mouth is. That's a lot of periapsis to absorb, but I reckon we can do it. So we'll be firing at about three seconds. Seven, six, five, four, and three. And there you are. Beautiful. A rather eccentric orbit, but an orbit nevertheless. And just to prove it, there you are. Now we can get high altitude science over here and low altitude science over here. Now in terms of effort, I'm not sure it achieved much. But in terms of just challenge, well it challenged me, even if it was relatively straightforward for Jeb. Well with that, I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this challenge and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Now of course with all movies these days there's an after credits bit and in this case we're going to go over the actual construction of the vessel itself. Now for those of you who are interested in science there won't be any. I just did all of this by trial and error. Now the basic construct is this unit in here which is a separator two octagonal struts 
and then two pairs of eight, a total of 16 separatrons. And of course in this lower section they're grouped in fours below this adapter and above it's just a single stack up to this final adjustment stage. We have four separatrons there and you can just see if I remove the stabilizers four separatrons here and this is our final payload with the science instruments on the top. Solar panel and battery for transmitting the science and running the scientific instruments as well as MechJeb. Now I'd like to think I was the first person to come up with this design but of course you'd be wrong. There's a chap called Zappi1987 who did almost identical design to this long before I did so uh, congratulations to him for beating me well to it. Now his vehicle was slightly uh, smaller in size uh, it had slightly less separatrons but in more stages he's used stacks of 12 not stacks of 16 and has slightly more stacks. Uh, his uh, final altitude was uh, a little bit under mine. Um, his orbit was a little less eccentric uh, so you could argue that it was well it was a lot more efficient than mine but I made it and that's all I care about. But one of the significant differences is that Zappi staged each of his separatrons in small groups, each running at 100% thrust, and then he'd drop a stage after 12 separatrons were fired. In my case, I changed the separatrons and altered them so that the thrust was limited on each stage. And I used this thrust limiting to set each stage to give a certain amount of thrust to weight ratio. You can see it's all about 2.3, 2.4 and this was about enough to get the right terminal velocity for each altitude, give or take. It wasn't that accurate but what it did do is it meant I could be almost completely hands off and just let MechJeb do everything but the final little bit of circularization at the top. Also you'll notice there's no struts now when I added struts to this thinking they were necessary, I mean come on this is just going to wave around in the wind, it actually made things worse and not better. My ship veered off at an angle just after launch, something around uh, low speed drag calculations just ruined the aerodynamics of this obviously highly aerodynamic vehicle. So I took them out and it flies perfectly well without them. And that's it really. That's all there is to it. No science, just trial and error. And if you can do better, why don't you try the Separatrons to Orbit Challenge? Good luck. Bye bye.